I think I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I think Lily has a rivalry with Asuka just because she's poor. He's the American rep. You can tell because he's loud. But it was this man who created Alex and Roger, who, if you don't know, are the dinosaur and the kangaroo that you can play in this game. Well, hey, diddle dee dee, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Monty, and y'all are watching Mott Mott Games. And today's the day. Today's the day. Today's the day. We get into some Tekken. Oh. Oh, dude, I'm so excited. Oh, dude, I'm so, so, so excited. Um, as the title suggests, as, as I've been saying on YouTube and the past few streams where we've discussed it, I am an old Tekken fan. I'm an old, old Tekken fan. It is one of the first video game series that I ever got into. I would say it was this one, Kingdom Hearts, and... Um, called Jack and Daxter. Um, those were the first ones that I really got into. It's the beginning, the seeds of my gaming career, if you will, you know? Um, so I'm excited to get back into it, um, to get my full history on it. I did just post a video today on YouTube, so go check that out. I I, I have something prepared for us. I have a lore board prepared for, uh, prepared for us. Um, and it's a bit, it's a bit different than what we've been doing, um, with other lore boards so far. So I'm excited to show, share with you guys what I've worked on. Okay. What do I know about Tekken before we begin? What do I know about Tekken before we begin? How much do I know about Tekken? Ask me again, how much I know about Tekken? Ask me again, how much I know about Tekken? I know a lot about Tekken. <laughs> now, granted, 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 I have not touched Tekken in years. I have not touched Tekken in years. I told y'all about how I got turned off from Tekken during Tekken 7, and I'm like now back. Um, and so this is my recollection of what went on in Tekken, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna go out over this before we begin actually playing the game, but this is what I remember from the series, okay? Very, we're gonna go as quick as we can because there's a lot to go over, but let's get into it, okay? So this is, this is, this is the Tekken lore by somebody who hasn't touched Tekken in a long time, okay? Here we go. You cannot begin Tekken without talking about Heihachi Mishima, okay? Heihachi Mishima began the tournament. He he started the company that is like behind the tournament called the Mishima Zaibatsu. Um, he's also a really bad dad. Really, really bad dad. Look at him throwing Kazuya off of a cliff. Good lord. Um, and then like develop a rivalry over his son, which culminated in Tekken 7, where Heihachi died. Oh, by the way, spoilers for Tekken, okay? Spoilers for Tekken. Um, and now he's dead, which is crazy. You know what? You know what's really crazy? Heihachi has been in every Tekken game. I don't think he's in this one, which makes this the first game where Heihachi is not in it. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, so Heihachi had a son, Kazuya, Kazuya Mishima. Kazuya is uh, 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 also a bad guy. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, not, nearly none of the Mishimas, including Jin, are good guys, like through and through, none of them are. They, you will see and hear about all the evil things that they have done. They're all evil in some, some way, shape, or form, right? So, Kazuya started the G Corp, which is another company to rival the Mishima Zaibatsu. This rivalry goes really deep, by the way. So they're, they're, they're fighting, like, in the corporate world, and then, like, amongst each other. He's also infected with, with what's called the devil gene, right? Which allows him to turn into the devil. Pretty self-explanatory. And it, I think, forgive me if I'm wrong here, Tekken 7 is like a blur in my brain because I try to forget about it. Um... <laughs> I am a Tekken 7 hater, I'm sorry, but I think it was through Kazumi that he got the devil gene, which is his mom, who was in Tekken 7, and she's dead, and Heihachi killed her, but then she came back in 7, I don't remember, so, um, but Kazuya also had a son, his name is Jin Kazama, right, my gay awakening, he had him, he had him with, uh, Jun Kazama, who is Jin's mom, um, she's dead, I think she, I think Ogre killed her, I don't remember. So, <laughs> uh, Jin seeks revenge for his mom, and he also has the devil gene, 
Um, and at some point, Jin takes over the Mishima Zaibatsu um, after he ousts Heihachi. I think it's when he kills Heihachi in 5. Um, quote unquote. And when he does that, he becomes a dictator. And when he becomes a dictator, he like he creates all this chaos in the world. Like he bombs Spain at some point, and he like he like just makes everyone's life miserable. And and also that he can summon this dude Azazel, right? So they can kill him. So he had like good intentions, but he also still like killed a bunch of people. That's what Jin did. That's what Jin did. And hi Cisco, right? Welcome, welcome. Um, so that's what Jin did. Um, then there's like other side characters. Uh, Heihachi has a pet. He had, uh, Kuma. Kuma the first. There's two Kumas. Little, little do you know. Two Kumas. The first Kuma is the dad of the current Kuma. But this dad passed. I don't remember if this, if Kuma's dad died because he was killed by Paul or if he just died of old age. But it doesn't matter because this is our Kuma, right? The Kuma we know and love. Kuma we know and love. He's a silly guy, silly, silly guy. Loves to joke around, loves to eat fish. You know, you know the vibes. Um, he also has a huge crush on Panda, by the way. Look at her, look at her, look at her. Tell her she's cute, tell her she's cute, because she is cute. We love Panda. Um, has a huge crush on Panda, has a rivalry with Paul Phoenix. Who's Paul Phoenix? He is the American rep of, <laughs> of Tekken. He's the American rep. You can tell because he's loud and uh, punches everything. Um, and he's blonde. Uh, Paul Phoenix claims he's the strongest in the universe. In one of his endings in Tekken 5, he, like, beats everyone in the universe. And then at some point, like, all these aliens come and try to fight him. Tekken is a wacky world. If you haven't... If that hasn't gotten through to you guys yet, Tekken is a wacky world. If you think, If you think Mortal Kombat is wacky... Tekken's lore can get both really serious and really, really dumb. <laughs> if you haven't known. <laughs> Finity, you strap in. It's going to be a lot. And Lennox, Panda is so cute. I love her so much. She's such a... And in one of Panda's endings, she becomes the leader of the Mishima Zaibatsu. And if that's not a Shi'i-O mentality, I don't know what is. Um, Paul is also best friends with Martial Law, who is like the uh, who is like the Bruce Lee of the Tekken world. Like he's literally like Bruce Lee. Like he has like the Bruce Lee move set and all that stuff. He's a cook, a restaurateur, um, and he also has a son named Forrest. I all I know about Forrest is that he is Marshall's son and that he was in Tekken Tag. Um, but going back to Panda, Panda is actually the pet of good old Ling Xiaoyu, right? Ling is a, um, is a school friend of Jin Kazama, right? They're, be they're, they're, they're buddies from, from school, right? I think high school. Um, and she also is like hinted sometimes to be like a love interest to Jin. I think, I think it's either Tekken 5 or Tekken 6's ending where like, he beats the main guy, and then she, like, runs over and, like, hugs him. I don't know, but there's, like, subtext there. So there's subtext there. I don't like this ship personally, but God bless. She is also the the granddaughter of my main in Tekken, uh, Tekken 5 and Tekken 6. Wang Jinrei. Look at him! Look at him! Look at Wang Jinrei, dude. Oh, my God, I love this man. Um, Wang Jinrei is an old man. And he is the old man rep of uh, of of uh, of Tekken, right? If you are uh, <laughs> if you are in a retirement home, if you are part of the VFW, um, this is your rep. This is your guy. <laughs> um, he is also the the a good long friend of uh, this guy Jinpachi Mishima, right here, who is the big bad of Tekken Five. Bane of my existence, the bane of my existence, bro. In, like when I was a child, fighting this man in Tekken 5 was such a struggle. He does this move where he like launches a like... Plasma ball out of a mouth that opens from his abs, from his old man abs, and like halves your health. I hate this man, but he was so cool to play in Tekken Tag too. 
He was also really cool. But these two are old friends, and I'm not gonna lie to y'all, Wong's ending in Tekken 5, watch it. It is one of the saddest moments of my childhood when Wong's there holding Jinpachi's body in his arms and he's like, thank you for finding me. Thank you for stopping me from committing all this evil. <sighs> oh, so good. This was my leaves on the vine. Da, 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 da. This is little soldier. That, that's this is my childhood. That moment of that, right? Um, also, there's Akuma. Akuma's at, here at some point, but I'm not gonna talk about him because he pisses me off. Anyway, um, Ogre is another big bad of Tekken. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I know he does a lot of really bad things, like a lot of really bad things, but I don't remember at all what he did. I know everyone's after him. I know everyone's after him for revenge, but I just literally cannot think of anything that this man did. I'm sure he did them. I just forget what they are. So there's that. There's also True Ogre, which is this guy. I don't know if this is like his true form. I don't remember. All I remember is these two were in Tekken Tag, and Tekken Tag is not canonical, so... Wah, wah, wah. And hi, Chris. Welcome, welcome. How are you? How are you doing? Um, where else should we tackle this? Huarong. Huarong is some just some dude. If I'm being honest with y'all, Huarong is literally just some dude who showed up and was like, I'm your rival, Jin. Happened in Tekken 4. That's literally like his entire story. <laughs> I know he rides a motorcycle now. But that's what Horong story is. This is his master, Bekdo San. I know he does Taekwondo. Uh, Miguel Rojas is the man, a man from Spain. Remember when I told you earlier that Jin like bombed the entire world, basically? Well, Miguel's sister was part of that bombing. She died, and Miguel seeks revenge against Jin. That's his story. Um, Azuka, Jin's cousin. The end. But she also has like a weird rivalry with this girl, Lily de Rochefer. Um, I love her gameplay, by the way. She's a rich girl. Um, she has a rivalry with Azuka. I think it's just because they're... I think... I'm going to be honest with y'all. I think Lily has a rivalry with Asuka just because she's poor. I think that's it. This is class warfare at its finest. Um, her butler is Sebastian. The end. Zafina, she showed up in Tekken 6, knew a lot about Azazel. That's it. <laughs> okay, so the William sisters are um, a long time Tekken, Tekken additions, right? Nina is like this super soldier who got like experimented on. Like think Steve Rogers from Marvel, but like a girl, but they also like didn't treat him well. You know what I mean? So that's Nina's story. Um, Nina was genetically experimented on. She's like an assassin. In Tekken 6, when Jin took over the Mishima Zaibatsu, she became like his right-hand man. <laughs> um, she also got like, has a son through like test tubes and genetic modification. And that son is Steve Fox, who is, I think British and a boxer. Um, Nina also has a sister named Anna who wasn't experimented on. I think she got adopted by a rich family. This is the part where I don't remember very well. Um, but I think she feels, like, abandoned by Nina, if I remember correctly. And, uh, now they have a rivalry. Like, one of Anna's endings is her literally, like, shooting a rocket launcher at Nina. So, there's that. Um, but Anna, Anna became the right-hand man of Kazuya, Kazuya Mishima, right? When he started this thing called G-Corp. And G-Corp is the, the thing that he, like I said earlier, made to rival the Mishima Zaibatsu, right? And G-Corp makes these guys, the Jack Robots. The Jack Robots. Y'all know them, y'all love them. So the Jack Robots have like a new model with every game. So like in Jack Five or in Tekken 5, they were Jack 5, Tekken 6, Jack 6. Now I think it's Jack 8, you know what I mean? So that's kind of like the thing there. That's the gimmick there. Um I believe Anna is jealous. 
Yeah, sibling. That rocket launcher definitely took them to a new level, Chris. Um, Bruce Irving is a Muay Thai fighter. I don't remember like his lore outside of him joining the G Corp and becoming like Kazuya's bodyguard. So that's what I remember. Um, I know Eddie Gordo's there. He's the Capoeira King. Y'all know him. Y'all love him. Joined the tournament to uh, fund his master's medical needs. Chrissy Montero, I think, is a fellow student, and she's out looking for Eddie in the tournament. Um, uh, uh, we have we have we have Michelle Chang, who I don't remember anything about. All I know is that she has a daughter. Julia Chang, who is an environmentalist, and she hates that G Corp and the Mishima Zaibatsu are both like destroying the environment, and so that's like her big thing. Um, and both of these mother and daughter duo are thirsted over by this guy, Ganryu, the sumo wrestler. I all I know is he has a crush on them, and he's like 50 years old. Um, <laughs> Mokujin is an old piece of like tree that came to life when. <laughs> This is, this is another part where the lore gets crazy. He came to life when uh, when they've battled against Ogre and it created all this, like, dark magical energy. <laughs> um, then we have the wrestling groups, right? So... Um, there is actually two versions of each of these characters, right? So King has two versions. There's King 1 and King 2, and then there's Armor King 1 and Armor King 2. All four different characters, by the way. So King 1 is like the first king. He is a luchador. Um, I know that he like ran an orphanage and like used the money that he won through the orphanage to help his orphanage. And he was also like partners with the first armor king and they were like best buddies. But then he died, King One died for some reason that I don't remember. And one of the kids at the orphanage took up the mantle and became King Two, right? The king we know and love. And King Two trained under armor King One, okay? So you have to really bear with me on this part. You have to really just like lock in for this part, okay? So he trained with armor King Two. But, or Armor King 1. And Armor King 1 got into a bar fight with this guy, Craig Marduk. And Marduk accidentally kills Armor King 1. And so, I think Tekken 5 is when King 2 swears revenge to kill Craig Marduk. But at some point, King 2 just can't do it. He can't bring himself to kill Craig Marduk. And so... And so, and so, he does it. And they become, like, best friends. They literally just become best friends. And <laughs> out of the blue, from left field, Armor King 2. <laughs> His brother comes back and swears revenge on them both. And that's the last I remember of that. Hi, Blue Mage. Welcome, welcome. Um, next, we have the Yoshimitsu storyline. So Yoshimitsu is a swordsman from a clan that I don't remember. I think it's it might be Kanji clan. I don't remember. But he's from a he's a swordsman. He's the only one of the only like um, uh, Tekken characters that brings like a weapon to the thing to the uh, to the tournament. Everyone else does like hand to hand. I know Kunimitsu. Kunimitsu is in here as well. Kunimitsu is also from his clan. Couldn't tell you anything about her. Brian Fury, though, is super interesting. So the story with Brian Fury is um, Yoshimitsu found him in Tekken 5, brought him back to his clan where they like helped him, um, healed him, and fixed him up and all that stuff. But then Brian Fury just goes like wackadoodle and uh, uh, kills everybody, kills everybody in his clan, and kills the doctor who helped him, which is this guy, Dr. Abel, right? And so that's what happened. That's what happened. And now Yoshimitsu has a rivalry with Brian Fury. Isn't Yoshimitsu also in Soul Calibur, asks Chris. Yes, and actually, good point, I forgot to mention this. The clan that Yoshimitsu is from is actually the descendants of the Yoshimitsu from Soul Calibur. So canonically, they are connected. 
Canonically, they are part of the same universe. Um, other characters, Leo, couldn't tell you anything about him. Sorry, couldn't tell you anything about him. He showed up in Tekken 6. I thought he was a mid-character. Eh. <laughs> Bob, I know Bob is another American rep. Wants to be a hero. There's also a slim Bob. Couldn't tell you anything else. I don't think there's much else in their characters. Same with Feng Wei. Feng Wei, just an angry guy. Honestly, just an angry guy they introduced in Tekken 5. Um, killed his master. Couldn't tell you anything else about him. Uh, Lei Wulong, if there was a uh, Bruce Lee rep that I showed you guys in the beginning, this is the Jackie Chan rep, okay? Fights in the drunken master style. He's a police officer. Yep. And also, just because we play Final Fantasy here a lot, can't forget Tekken 7. Hey. <laughs> can't forget Tekken 7. Hey. Hey. That's my king. That's my king. Um, who else did I not hit? Oh, yes. Up here. So, in case you didn't know, oh my god, surprise! Heihachi had two other children. <gasps> First one is Lee Chaolan. Um, Lee Chaolan. Adopted son of Heihachi, super rich, owns his own company. This is like literally tech, bo tech bro dream, Lee Chaolan, right? Um, also part of my own gay awakening, to be honest. Uh, Violet is Lee's alter ego. <laughs> and Combot is one of Lee's creations. Lars, introduced in Tekken 6, protag of uh, Tekken 6. And found out he's a, another son of Heihachi through, like, an affair that he had at some point in his life. <laughs> um, but his best friend is a robot girl, Elisa Buskanovich. Elisa Buskanovich is the girl who is a robot. She, like, takes off her head, hands it to you, and it explodes. She has chainsaws for arms. Like, she's so cool. I love Elisa. And she also flies, by the way. Um, in Tekken 6, she, like, went evil because nina said the, the the code word and she went like crazy but then i think she got fixed at some point i don't know and they're best friends again they're best friends again lars and elisa are best friends again um like yuji and uh toto um, 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 um but she was created by this dude dr boskanovich right you could play him in tech and tag too he's a silly old man i remember his like moveset being really fun but it was this man who created alex and roger who if you don't know are the dinosaur and the kangaroo that you can play in this game <laughs> they are the dinosaur and the kangaroo you can play in this game so they're just genetic experiments that he made roger became became a deadbeat dad though and so his son and his mom took over the mantle and that's why it's roger and roger jr so that's that um the person who helped lars though was raven raven is a spy and a ninja super cool dude i remember when they introduced him in tekken 5 oh he was so cool um uh, he joined in the fifth tournament just to keep an eye on the goings on within the Mishima Zaibatsu. Um, I know Master Raven from Seven is part of the thing, but I don't know anything about her. Um, and I know that he beefs with one of my other mains, Sergei Dragunov, who is so cool. He does Krav Maga, he's a military man. Um, he's known as like the white angel of death. He's like really, like, he doesn't talk at all, and he just, he's, he's real brutal. He's real brutal. I love Dragunov. Did I get everything? I think I got everything. Did I get everything? I think I got everything. Well, that is my really quick run through of Tekken lore, y'all. My lightning speed run through of Tekken lore before we jump into Tekken 8, okay? So I hope y'all enjoyed that.